Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and today I do something you guys have been bothering me about for quite a while now, and that is lower the car. So I've had lots of comments uh, asking me what I'm doing about the suspension and how I'm going to, uh, what I'm going to do with this car. Uh, I kept joking that I was going to raise it up and have it as a, uh, a safari build, and uh, these did actually do very well and won the, uh, the East African Safari Rally back in the 70s, but uh, that is not what I have intended for this car. <laughs> um, this is gonna be uh, a nice, um, basically the whole gist of this car is something that I can take on the odd track day, but it's gonna be a nice everyday street car. So there's a bunch of different suspension sort of options available for these. Um, some of them involve, you know, I can buy the shocks and buy the springs and buy some uh, coil perches and sort of uh, mix and match it all together. But I wanted sort of a bit more of a cohesive system. So um, after my research, I went and bought some uh, these MCAs. Uh, so this is a, um, uh, it's a, it's a coil over setup for this car. The thing is, is because of the way that these struts are, um, as opposed to cars I've had in the past, like other new Nissans, um, I've had sort of uh, S13s and uh, Skylines and stuff, and they're a basic bolt-in system. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more, because the spindle is, is um, part of the bottom of the strut, you have to actually uh, weld it on. So. Thankfully, uh, MCA, uh, they gave me this uh, diagram, shows me exactly how much of the original strut I need to retain and cut off. So uh, that means the first thing I've got to do is to get this up, get the wheels off, and um, get the original struts out. Because I was sort of uh, too lazy to actually mask up these bolts separately when I painted the car, I'm going around them all now, around the base of the washer with a, uh, my Stanley knife, just so that when I crack the nuts, they hopefully won't chip off a big chunk of paint around the edge. Um, it's just a bit of a precaution because obviously these have all got to be cracked, taken off, swapped out. So uh, let's make sure I don't make too big of a mess of uh, my nice paint job. All right, they came out pretty easily. That wasn't uh, too big of a headache. I thought it would have been a lot harder with old rusty bolts and stuff like that, but everything was, um, was pretty good. My next step now is I need to actually pull these apart. Um, what, I, what I eventually have to do is I have to cut these struts off, but obviously there is a shock absorber inside here. So I have to remove the shock first because if I, yeah, you don't want to cut while there's a, there's a full shock absorber in there. And to take these springs off, uh, they're under tension, so I have to get my spring compressors out, compress the springs, then release the nut, take the springs off, and um, undo this uh, locking nut on the top here. Take the shocks out. Let's do that. That is putrid. It stinks. Oh, I think there's like sort of water and oil and gunge and ugh, down the bottom of there. All right, well, that's one out. Um, I'll just get the other one out and uh, then we can start looking at cutting this stuff up.
<sighs> that second shock was a lot harder to get out than the first one because there's so much rust and sludge and horrible gunk inside the bottom of this um, this tower um, it was all locked in there and it just would not come out uh, thankfully I don't need those shocks so I managed to bash them and I dented the uh, bejesus out of the, uh, the, the shaft but it's fine all right, so um, now it comes to the sort of scary bit is um, as MCA actually gave me this, um, this sheet, it's showing me here that I need to basically cut the shaft off at 45 mil from the base. So I need to measure up 45 mil on both of those shafts and cut them off. And that is where, if I can find my shock, this, New one will actually slide over the uh, old one. This top edge is a bit bashed up, but uh, this will slide over the top and uh, we will be able to weld it on. Well, that's the theory anyway. So I've gone through now, I've cut off both struts and I've gone around and I've cleaned up all of the uh, the metal ready for welding. But uh, I've also cleaned up the throwaway bits uh, just so I can get the welder out and just uh, get the settings right to actually weld it up. I, I just wanna do a bit of playing around, do a couple of test passes on these things and weld these two bits together just to see how it goes. And then I'm going to make sure I've got my settings perfect and weld the struts on and hopefully I don't mess it up and I do a nice good strong job. I'm pretty confident that uh, that uh, my MIG welding is good enough. I am not ticking it because my TIG welding is not good enough. Uh, so uh, yeah, we'll uh, get into this now. That's good. Quite happy with that weld. I just uh, did a, uh, a smash test, which is uh, definitely not a, uh, a comprehensive test on how to uh, test my welds. But uh, the welds are nice and um, you know they're reasonably uh, neat and tidy, so they'll uh, they'll hold. And there's lots of penetration there. I'm uh, quite happy with that. So I'm going to go through now and uh, do the scary bit and weld these things on. So they're definitely not the greatest, prettiest welds, but there is plenty of penetration there, and uh, I'm quite happy that these things are not gonna go anywhere, so that is one down. Okay, so fronts are done and they're on. That was uh, reasonably painless, but the rears, I'm a little bit more apprehensive. I'm just wondering how easily these are gonna come off. So uh, if I can get them off, welding the thing on will be easy. It's just getting the rears off. Let's see how that goes. All 
right, so after some wrestling around, I've realized that um, I don't want to pull this all apart. <laughs> um, it's going to be a pig to pull everything apart, and I might have to replace a bunch of things um, that I'll damage as I pulled it out. So uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do this in the car. I've managed to uh, loosen up the, uh, the strut. I've unbolted it from inside the car, so I'm going to take the spring off now, um, and clean it all up, and I should be able to cut this off in the car and weld it on again without pulling it out. So it'll save me a hell of a lot of headaches. So uh, I'm gonna do that. So because I'm too lazy to disconnect the axle and, uh, and everything else, um, what I've done is I have taken the spring off, but I haven't been able to get the shock out of the tower because it's too long. Um, but that's not an issue. I've just put a, uh, a clamp on it up here, holding it up, uh, up away from the base. So it's now no longer down in the base. I've marked off my height and on the rears it's 35 mil. So it's only a short little bit. So I'm gonna cut this tower off and then I'll be able to pull the whole thing out. Um, Yep, I'm gonna do it in there because I'm lazy. Well, I was actually reasonably happy with how I was able to weld that. I managed to get all the plug welds in um, reasonably well. The one on this side, I don't know how deeply it penetrated. And uh, uh, I got the MIG all the way around. But uh, on this side again, um, there's some bits where I've got like a really good angle and got good penetration in the corner here. But the, uh, the closest parts, which to be honest, probably wouldn't make much difference on the bench or not. It's welded quite well and uh, I'm quite happy with it. That's, uh, it's definitely not going anywhere. I do have to come back at some stage probably and change the wheel bearings and stuff in here. I haven't touched them because uh, they're not rattling, they sound like they're okay and uh, I just want to get the car on the road and uh, deal with that stuff when it comes. So in any case, this is one side done, it's just a matter of uh, bolting it up and then go and do the same thing to the last one. All right, that was quite a bit of work, but now uh, all the wheels are on. I can already see that the wheels are sitting a lot higher up under the body than they were before. No idea how this is gonna sit. It's now the moment of truth to actually lower the car down, but now I've got as much adjustment as I want to get the ride height where I want it. But um, it's all back together, so let's lower it down and see what we got. Well, that's still sitting a fair bit higher than what I want it to sit, so uh, I'm gonna go around now, lift it back up again, see if I can just adjust it a bit more and see if I can get it sitting better. It's still gonna settle a fair bit, so I don't wanna slam it right now. I want it to still be a functional vehicle that I can actually drive over bumps and it's not actually going to be scraping the ground everywhere. I want it, I don't want it stupid, but I want it to look just right, and that's still too high. That looks better. That's looking good. 
I may have to raise it up just a tiny little bit because I think it's just under the, uh, the legal uh, limit in New South Wales, which I believe is uh, the lowest part of the body underneath has to be 100 millimetres off the ground. Uh, it's basically at that now, so it's sitting just nice. Uh, I'm, really, I'm really liking the look now. It's, uh, oh, the hoist only just comes down enough to get underneath. I don't want it too low where I have to jack it up every time to get it on the hoist. I just want to be able to you know, drive it on there when I actually drive it and, uh, and get it on and off the hoist. But that is looking great. Um, there's heaps of adjustment in these coilovers, so it makes it so much easier. And uh, basically, you just uh, turn the, the base plate up and down, and then you've got a, uh, a little grub screw. You just lock it off um, at the height. And um, it's all good. I am very, very happy with that. Um, it was a, uh, a full on day, but um, it's done and it's looking great. So, um, all right guys, that's all I've got time for and uh, no fun facts today. As always, um, if you wanna see these videos a day earlier than everybody else, uh, you can check out the Patreon page and help us out there. And um, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that stuff. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram to get some uh, uh, previews on what's going on here and uh, I'll see you in the next one. See you guys.